The Burning Archipelago is a collection of deserted cities that float inside protective bubbles. They are tethered together by magic and they are untouched by the packed world's flaming sun. Actually, for the last century, they haven't been deserted anymore. Humans make up nearly half of the population of the archipelago. And unsurprisingly, they have most of the power. Most of these humans are going to be high-ranking executives or members of the Church of Serenray. The android population design heat-resistant bodies for themselves or for new androids who come to the station, and they reside in Fireside Foundry. As idyllic as the Pact Worlds are, the androids still have a caste problem within even the archipelago, usually living in stations built beneath the bottom of the pelago. Cassathans also took up refuge in the Burning Archipelago. Now, they went to more of the fringes and some of the outermost bubbles they turned into Solarian monasteries. Many Lashuntas can also be found in the Burning Archipelago. Now, they have lost their usual cherub-like demeanor. This comes from a feeling of impending doom. So any Lashunta who comes here usually becomes cynical, paranoid, even isolationist. They even have a devoted town, which they call a Sana Town. This is a little more walled off due to their paranoid and isolationist tendencies. Unfortunately for the Lashuntas, they don't realize what is causing this buildup of negative emotions. There is a race that lives within the sun itself, not in the protected cities, but literally inside the sun. They are called Anasinoi. They also have a city within the sun, but they don't usually let others visit. They are psychic and telepathic, and their warnings that they have been projecting, these are what caused the Lashunta to get this overwhelming sense of dread. Asana Town, the home bubble for the Lashuntas, this functions basically like it's a military base. They have simple buildings, and they are very utilitarian. Things need to be packed up fast if they need to make a quick escape. Asana Town has become one of the thorns in the side for the government of the archipelago. When corporations or governments are trying to do some kind of initiative, whether it's harmless or actually has some impact to the archipelago as a whole, the Lashuntas here will become unreasonably irate. Any project that is started that the Lashuntas don't agree with will come to meet some accidents. Enough so that this project or whatever it is that the government or corporations are trying to do will be abandoned. And these outbursts for the Lashuntas have been becoming more and more frequent. Ifrit from the Plain of Fire are also common visitors. Daily life in the Burning Archipelago is not much different from that of other cities, except for the location. The vast majority of its residents have accepted the fact that if they go to visit this city and one of the bubbles fail for whatever reason, they're all dead. They have all accepted this as a possibility. But that doesn't mean that they are okay with things like crime and protests, corporate greed. In order to try to combat some of the crime and establish laws, the Burning Archipelago, they formed a Senate called the Archipelago Senate. The way it works is each city within its own bubble is its own entity. They set their own rules, they set their own laws, even though they're all located in generally the same spot. Each representative then looks at the archipelago as a whole and they form laws to try to govern all of the cities together rather than a specific bubble or a specific region in the burning archipelago. Very rarely will the Senate step in and intervene on a city's behalf or a jurisdiction's behalf, and usually when this happens, it's a political crap show. Guilds and organizations are also permitted to speak at these meetings. Because the Burning Archipelago is so busy trying to govern themselves, they don't busy themselves with the politics of the Pact Worlds. And the Pact Worlds, they consider them to be part of it, but they have non-voting membership. As we've mentioned, the Burning Archipelago has bubbles and there is a city inside each of these bubbles. And these cities are actually built on a disc that sort of floats inside the bubble. <laughs> no one is entirely sure what is keeping the discs afloat or what is actually keeping these shields powered around the archipelago. What is widely believed though is that this power source or this technology is magical. 
These bubbles also protect the people inside from the extreme heat, the radiation, as well as the incredible brightness. When ships approach the sun, there is a small tunnel at the entrance that opens up, and you can fly inside. This tunnel will take you to the Dawnshore spaceport. That is if you can get past the Serenite guards. The Serenite Dawn Patrol are the ones who check incoming ships for any suspicious characters. Each of the city bubbles have their own aesthetic. This is partly due to who controls them and their individual nature, but also from how this city was colonized. The central bubble of Dawnshore houses most of the religious organizations. The Radiant Cathedral of Serenray can be found here. The Fireside Bubble is much more corporate, and the Stellacuna Bubble is more scientific. All of these bubbles connect with magical energy tethers, and you can travel between each bubble using these connections. These are called the Line Crawler Fairies. Now, if you've missed a ferry and you really need to get to a destination, you can charter a Sun Skimmer. These are vehicles that leave the bubble and harness the power of the solar winds. Very dangerous. With these magical tethers, the city floats as a whole. Nothing shifts or moves. It is kept in a static formation. And the only access points to each of these bubbles is through the tether points, through a type of magical gate that is controlled by the government of that bubble. Now, before I tell you how this city was discovered, if you wouldn't mind doing a favor for me and hitting that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you want to get more Starfinder content from myself, then please hit subscribe with the bell notification. If you want to control what Starfinder videos come out next, at the Maple Finder level, my patrons get to decide on a monthly video. So if you'd like to help me out and get your choice of what I will cover next, then please consider joining me on Patreon. The Burning Archipelago didn't used to be the major city that it is. It used to be completely abandoned. No one knew it existed. It wasn't until 223 after Gap that Serenite scholars, they were observing and orbiting the sun where they discovered it accidentally. Soon after its discovery, their major priestess of the time, Imril Novahart had a vision of walking through the streets, and she knew that Saren Ray was calling her there. She was able to convince a small crew that it was Saren Ray's will to fly into the sun. As they got closer and closer to the sun, one by one, critical systems, engines, computers, even the glass across the bridge, it all started to collapse or break. These ships were just not designed for the intense heat and the gravity of flying into a sun. Just when they thought all was lost and they were about to come face to face with Saren Ray, a tunnel opened up in the sun and they flew in to what is now known as the Dawn Shore. Sister Novahart gave a inspiring speech to the Pact World, letting them know of the discovery of the city in the sun. She claimed and named the Radiant Cathedral found within Dawnshore, and this triggered a mass immigration to the archipelago. It is still not known who built the city and why, or even why it was completely abandoned. But the Dawnshore became Serenray's most sacred settlement. Within the bubble, there are many notable places of interest, and I wanted to share a few of them with you. We already know that Abadar is everywhere, and Abadar likes money. So it's unsurprising that in Fireside, there would be the Abadar Core Hypermarket. This is one of the largest areas accessible to just regular people coming into the archipelago, and one of the largest markets. But this isn't your usual trinkets and shops. Everything that happens here is wholesale, so if you want something, you better want a lot of it. Abadar Core also has a sizable chunk of the security contracts when it comes to protection of the archipelago, and specifically the market. They run all of these activities through a key-shaped tower that rises above the market, which they call Pin Tower. With Dawnshore being the main place that you will land, it is unsurprising that there is a Dawnshore spaceport, and it is the largest port of entry to Dawnshore, but this is also basically the only way you can get in or out. Tons of mechanical bays, facilities for repairing your ships, tubes for launching yourself out back into the sun, or away from the sun, hopefully. Dawnshore is known for its talented mechanics. It is also known for pickpockets and thieves, so pay attention to your stuff when you go into Dawnshore. 
On the other side of the sun from the burning archipelago, there is a starship-sized portal, referred to as Far Portal. It opens to a particularly dangerous and inhospitable region of the Plane of Fire. There have been some scientific expeditions gone through the portal, not much has come of them, and a permanent research station has been established near the portal. So far, no planner beings or planner objects have come out of the portal, but the research station has been picking up some increased strange signals coming from the portal. The Verdeon Bubble is a paradise. It's a bit of a break from the metal and the solar flames that you see within the rest of the archipelago. Horticulture is the main aspect of this bubble. They like plants. You can also find a number of pleasure domes here, ranging from high-end casinos to spas. All of these things are located in Verdeon. Most of the pleasure domes, and there are several of them, they are controlled by small crime families. They were able to sneak their way in during the establishment of the cities. And we have to talk about one of the main draws to the Burning Archipelago, the Radiant Cathedral. Many of the Serenites believe that this cathedral was built by Saren Ray herself. When the Serenites claimed the temple, they found that they had to make little to no adjustments to make it a perfect place of worship. And they used this as proof that this area, this cathedral, was built by Saren Ray. Within the stained glass windows of the cathedral, there are strange writings, symbols that no one has been able to decipher. Some believe this to be the secret language of the Dawnflower. Others believe that this tells the story of the original builders of the archipelago. Due to the size of the cathedral, the Serenites have installed some Aries, places where sun skimmers can park their skimmers at the top of the cathedral. They serve to maintain the building and some of the Serenites' proprietary technologies. While it is used for this purpose, the pilots of the sun skimmers have created an unofficial bar at the top of the church. They call this affectionately Aurora. And you know they're gonna brag about the things that they've done, times that they've almost died, the stunts that they've pulled. And what better way to do that than throwing back a few beers. If you would like to learn a little bit more about the Pact Worlds, then please check the playlist on your screen now. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of the Burning Archipelago. Thank you to all of my patron supporters. Your support is greatly appreciated throughout this move. My name's Nathaniel. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.